So I'm James Lyne, the Director of Technology Strategy at Sophos, and I'm responsible um, kind of in two parts. One, for getting out and educating the outside world about what's happening with the threat, what the bad guys are up to. But I also spend a lot of my time researching the latest technologies and the latest threats to make sure that our direction as a security company is future-proofed. Really interesting. One of the, the big questions that I'm always asked when I finish talking about security and doing a presentation is, does this affect everyone? Does this affect me? You know, is it just high-end enterprises and military? You know, do I need to worry? And the reality is that the cybersecurity threat impacts everyone. You know, whether you know you're a you know, mother of a school child at home using the computer online, uh, or whether you're a large enterprise. Cyber criminals want to get hold of your credit card details or your information. So everyone needs to make sure that they're taking appropriate steps to protect themselves. It's actually astonishing how much computer viruses have changed over the last couple of decades. I mean, today in Sophos Labs, we're seeing about 200,000 new pieces of malicious code every single day. And only a couple of years ago, that was 50,000. A couple of years before that, 5,000 on a really bad day. So the volume and the velocity of new malicious code out there has increased astonishingly. But also, the creativity the different business models and the things that the bad guys are after. Traditional malware back in the old days was all about notoriety and it was the spotty teenager trying to get their name in the press and trying to do something damaging or alerting. Whereas today, most malicious code is invisible and it's trying to steal your data, steal the information from a company, essentially to make money. The last category I'd draw attention to, which used to be popular but disappeared for about 10 years, is hacktivists people hacking systems to draw attention to a political purpose or threat. So those guys, less interested in money and more about raising awareness. So the biggest threats for businesses often aren't the things that they expect. You know, people here in the, the media, they read these headlines about cyber war and you know, these super high-end unblockable viruses that are going to be impossible to defend against. In reality, most malicious code, most hacks, most phishing campaigns stealing information work because people make basic mistakes. Either basic mistakes in interacting with an email and clicking on something they shouldn't, or because they haven't looked after their computer cleanliness properly, making sure they're patched and running the appropriate security software. So I'm a real advocate of doing the basics really, really well, making sure that you've got those top 10 things like passwords and patching nailed, because they're going to deal with 99% of the problem. So cloud is a really interesting topic because lots of people have had a violent reaction to it in security terms. A lot of its adoption was halted because people were concerned about whether they'd get the same level of security as they traditionally had in their environments. But actually, I'm really hopeful that cloud's going to be part of the solution. And I see that already with some of the vendors. If you think about it, Lots of small businesses don't necessarily have the expertise or the funds to run a vast security infrastructure. Whereas, you know, big cloud providers of certain services can invest much, much more heavily into securing those services on their behalf. So as cloud providers grow more mature and responsible, some of these services are becoming more secure than their counterparts. The important thing is to recognize that cloud is not more or less secure by default, and to look at the specifics of the solution and the data you're dealing with in a level-headed way and make a decision as to whether it's mature enough. Security, I think, is a particular challenge for small businesses because they tend to have a small number of resources, they're intently focused on growth and, frankly, their business as they should be. I mean, they've, they've got important objectives. So unlike large organizations, they can't throw money at endless different solutions and having large teams of people cracking away at trying to deal with cyber criminals. And that makes them in many ways particularly exposed. 
The cyber criminals are still interested in going after them. They're a tempting target from an IP perspective, but also from a monetary perspective. For me, the key is simplicity. A lot of security solutions focus on providing as much flexibility as possible. It's about adding more bells and whistles and sliders that go from 0 to 42 and checkboxes you can turn on and off with really long, unintelligible, acronymic names. And that's really unhelpful for a small business. So I'm a really, really big fan of solutions that make it simple and easy for small businesses to adopt. And I'm a huge believer in working with the right partners, managed service providers or cloud providers to take a lot of that burden away from the small business and manage it on their behalf. I think with the right security strategy, a small business can make sure they've secured themselves without having to have it on the worry list day to day. When enterprises approach security, they often make heavy, heavy use of policy and strategy to drive the direction of their security. But you tend to find small businesses have less policy, they're a bit more organic and adaptive by definition. That's not inherently a bad thing. In fact, I've been to a lot of enterprises where I've read their acceptable use policy that outlines security procedures and it's 400 pages that make your eyes bleed with boredom and you know that no employee reads it. So I don't think a rigid, overanalyzed policy has to be a core part of security. But you do need to make sure it's on the agenda and you're asking the right questions. One of the things that I would definitely make sure small businesses do is have a policy, even if it's only one or two lines, around how they deliver security awareness training. How do they make sure in that organic, fast-changing environment that their staff know the basics so they aren't hit by cyber criminals and they've got things like secure passwords nailed. And you can actually find a lot of free guidance and tips online at our website as well as on the rest of the internet. So download that stuff, plagiarize it and use it and make the problem go away.